Let's say we go right up the middle. Negative, negative. One around the flag up the hill, the other one right through the swamp. Did you get the hill? Tails, you get the swamp. Flip the motherfucker. See you in college. All right. Two, what's your sip wrap over? We gotta get some. Nothing, sir. Delta one, Delta two, sip wrap over. Two, one, contact, contact, where? Actual. Where are you?
he does, he can go. He's got my word on that. If you don't, I'll kill you where you stand. Pop up if you're still alive. <laughs> got a reprieve, you hear me? You don't get to die today. You got your real Mary. reason we're all here, Colonel Hayes Hodges. He's calling it a career after 32 years of distinguished service. Now, Colonel, we got you a gift and a surprise, so don't act like you're not coming up Lieutenant Presley O'Banion defeated the Barbary pirates on the shores of Tripoli in 1805. Out of gratitude, the Pasha gave him the Mameluke sword, and Marine officers have carried one ever since. It's the symbol of a warrior. And you are right. a warrior. Now, this man's been riding a desk for the past 28 years, but not because he wanted to. He knows how to fight. It's in his blood. Well, uh, well, 
No more wars to fight, no more trials to lose. <laughs> so I expect I'll do some teaching at VMI. And I will recon the local restaurants in a concerted effort to find out what civilians eat. <laughs> and uh, of course, I intend to continue serving my country by honorably depleting the trout streams of the southern United States with my fly rod. That's about it. Health kid, smart Hodges. Oh, well, you know, he's, um, he studies more than any two people. I've never seen him. Yeah. You ought to fix that. Yeah. Got my orders. Oh, yeah, what? Got command of the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit, <laughs> Special <laughs> Operations Cape. <Congrats>. Congrats. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah. It's outstanding. All I got to do is lash him together and take him to sea. That's... You ain't missing nothing, Hodge. It's a whole new ball game. No friends, no enemies, no front, no rear. No victories, no defeats, no mama, no papa. Yeah. We're orphans out there. That's funny, you know, uh, one guy walks out through a swamp, he gets to come home to a desk, another guy drives up a hill, he gets to still be doing it all over the flip of the goddamn coin, you know, that's... It's funny. You gave good service to the Corps, Hodge. To think otherwise would be just plain crazy. You'd have gotten your command, buddy. straight down 2nd Division through General Perry. The American embassy in Yemen is surrounded by a crowd of demonstrators. The crowd isn't hostile, but it's large enough to have spooked their government into pulling their security forces. The 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit is going to provide extra security. We're going to babysit, Colonel. Roger that. Just show our presence. Uh, remember, though, if it turns hot, we're looking at an evac. We've got an ambassador and his family there. Now, let me run you through this. Here's your potential LZs. The Marines at the embassy advise we can gain entrance through the back way. Here's some stairs here where you can deploy your men to the roof, and these are your overwatch positions. I'll take them in myself, quietly. One platoon, trap team, put everyone else on ready fire. My thoughts exactly, Colonel. about some things, darling. Are they mad at Daddy? No, they're not mad at you, Daddy. Why are they yelling? They want attention. They're trying to get attention so that people will listen to them.
sir. State security analysts are asking for an assessment. Assessment? We get the hell out of here. That's the assessment. The six fleet marines are in the air, sir. They think I'm going to tough this one out. They're crazy. This is going to get worse. You tell Mrs. Marine to start packing what she needs. We're going home. Shall I indicate we're ready to evacuate, you sir? You ask where the hell are those helicopters? The ambassador wants to know where the choppers are. You heard me. Where the hell are the choppers?
Where's the ambassador? He's in there. Are we leaving? The heroes are outside, ma'am, but that's up to the ambassador. Stay away from the windows, please.
to a negative, negative. Be advised, I have women and children in my line of fire. I got snipers in the buildings at 400 meters. I'm not over. What is it about this order you don't understand, Captain Lee? Sir, are you ordering me to fire into the crowd? Over. Yes, goddammit! Waste the motherfuckers! Six out! Engage! Engage! Sergeant Mack. Sir? Contact all stations. Mission complete. Launch medevacs. Dead and wounded out first. Hi, Colonel. All stations, this is Ned. Red Man. Mission complete. Move all medevacs to LZ. I'll copy. Over. The FBI investigation shows that all the bullet holes in the MC wall came from directly across the way, from the snipers. Any weapons or ammo found among the dead or wounded? No, sir. Nothing. However, intelligence suggests this could have been a terrorist operation. Any proof? This is a tape from the embassy security system. Want me to thread it up? No, I don't want to watch videos, you know, and I don't want to hear about ammo casings in some building, because here I got 83 dead people. Unarmed. Women, children, old men, another hundred or so critically wounded. Here, I've got an international crisis of mega-fucking proportions. Bill, you know that there have been regular reports of a terrorist plot against this embassy. This was a regularly scheduled protest. It was every week. Like clockworks, the usual bullshit about American presence in the Gulf. Have you looked at these? I mean, I mean I'm just assuming you have, since they're on the front page of every newspaper in the world. You know, it's not that the rest of the world wants to hold us responsible. We are responsible. We can't even have the appearance of a cover-up. That does not excuse us from our duty, Mr. Sokol. We sent Colonel Childers in there, and the mission went to shit. Now, we can't go after the man who carried out his orders and ignore the people who issued those orders. Childers ordered the slaughter of innocent women and children. Let's just get that straight right now. I'll tell you what we ought to get straight. We lost three United States Marines. They lost 83! Now, are we going to go to war with Yemen over it? We're covering our ass all over the Middle East right now, General. Because of your man's hot-headed miscalculation, we are in danger of losing our embassies in Saudi, Jordan, and Egypt. We're in danger of losing our presence with every moderate in the region. Now, they're going to scream cover-up. And the screaming is going to get so loud, we'll be sending Marines back over there. And when that happens, the body count of American dead is going to be a hell of a lot higher than three. I see where you're going with this, Mr. Sokol. Now, will you be needing me anymore today? No. No, that's, that's fine, General. Thank you. Good day to you, sir. Where do you think you're going with that? 
You don't want to look at it. Nobody's looking at it. Why should the United States be held responsible for the actions of one man? What if the crowd had weapons? What if this shows they did fire first? Look, he could have fired over their heads, this moron! Didn't he know where he was? The Middle East! You know, he could have isolated on the snipers. He could have avoided confrontation. He could have done 50 fucking things. Instead, he destroyed a fragile trust. He put his own men in danger. Fuck this guy. Forget this tape. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to testify about it. I don't want it to exist. Childers reporting his audit, sir. Give us a minute, Skip. Yes, sir. Colonel, it's my duty to inform you that you've been charged with. <laughs> you know the drill. It's the Article 32 investigation. I'm facing a general court martial. Been charged with violation of at least three articles. Everything from breach of peace to conduct unbecoming. But the bottom line, 83 counts, violation of Article 118, murder. And that you issued an illegal order to have your Marines fire into a group of innocent civilians. Murder, sir? I'm the convening authority, so I've got to get this BS out of the way. Sign here. Initial here. You're not a flight risk, Terry, so there won't be any pretrial confinement. But this court martial convenes in eight days by direct order of the National Command Authority. Now, do you want me to call Bob Bennett or one of those guys, or you want to go with base legal? Terry, God damn it, we've been friends for 20 years. Now, you want to tell me exactly what the hell happened out there? I lost Marines. The crowd was hostile. They fired on us. They fired first, sir. I want you to know I did everything in the world to keep this from happening. It's just out of my hands now. Thanks a lot. When's the last time you actually caught something here? Two years. <laughs> I really need your help. Oh, yeah, I'll help. Anything you need. You want me to take the stand? I'll be a character witness. Anything you want. No, you don't understand what I'm asking. I want you to be my lawyer. I'm a good enough lawyer to know you need a better lawyer than me. Besides that, I'm short. Two nine plus one, wake up and I'm gone. You need one of those Washington cats. I don't want some Starbucks drinker who's never seen combat. I need somebody who's been shot at. Oh, yeah. I've been shot at. That's what I am. A shot up Marine. As a matter of fact, that's all the hell I am. No, no, wait a minute. I'm also a weak lawyer. I'm a very weak lawyer. And the government is going to come at you with every goddamn thing they've got. Major Bill Sokol, it's a pleasure to meet you. Come on in. Let me introduce you. Gentlemen, this is Major Mark Biggs. He'll be prosecuting the Childers Court Martial. The Marines put the Major through Stanford Law, and he owes him a couple years before he takes over the rest of the world. Major, of course, you know General Lowry. I'd like you to meet Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General West, and the Secretary of Defense, Mr. Wyatt. Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. What I gather from our esteemed NSC advisor and Secretary of State is that we've got a trial in two weeks. Seems awfully damn fast. Oh, I believe everyone in this room will agree. 
It's in the national interest that this trial be moved along quickly. The Article 32 investigation was complete and comprehensive. It all seems to point in one direction. Has he got himself a lawyer yet? Actually, he's requested a military attorney, sir, Colonel Hayes Hodges, 2nd Marine Division Lejeune. Any relation to General H. Lawrence Hodges? His son. Larry Hodges was one of this country's most distinguished officers. What do we know about Colonel Hayes Hodges? He's a guy who got blown apart in Vietnam, then went to Georgetown Law and became a cynic. Is that about right, Major? He was 67th in his class at Georgetown, sir. He doesn't take too many cases, doesn't win too many. He apparently went through an ugly divorce, had a drinking problem, retiring in two weeks. Jesus. Can we guarantee we get this guy? Sir, if I may say something. I am not a hired gun. I accepted this assignment because I believe in the merits of the government's case. I am not going to stack the deck against this guy. I will try this case on good evidence only. I'm glad to hear it. Anniversary, Mom. Oh, thank you. So good to see you. I wasn't sure you'd make it. Oh, you look wonderful. Sure. Thank you. How's it feel to be retired? Uh, I'm crazy. <laughs> good. Oh, you look great. Thank you. Well, come see Dad. Oh, there Along he is. The family. Yes, yeah. Ma'am. Hello, sir. Glad you could make it. Yes, sir. Remember me? It's the old guy. He looks like you. Do I know you? Yeah. Yeah, your voice sounds really familiar. Well, let me give you a clue. I was married to your mom for about five minutes. Really? You sure? Yeah. Because I don't, uh... <laughs> well, is he guilty? Sir? Your friend, Colonel Childers. Guilty of what, sir? Come on, Hayes. You served with him. Is he the rabid dog we've all been hearing about? I don't think I should comment, sir. Come on, Dad, this is family. You can lighten up just a little bit, you know? You know, we said at the Naval Academy, even if you thought you weren't responsible, it went wrong, and you were there. Since when have you not had a comment? Since Childers asked me to defend him. No. Oh, hey. What? Excuse me, are you, are you kidding me? No. Wh why would you do that? Because he asked me, and I owe him. Well, that's great. That represents everything that's wrong with the military. Wisdom from the one person in this family who is not elected to serve his country. Yeah, the children must have snapped. Happens in combat. I've seen it many times. I'm sure you have too. I'd like to thank you all for reminding me why we have the presumption of innocence in the United States of America. What, what are you, Abraham Lincoln? Come on, you can't hide behind that. The guy murdered innocent women and children. Where'd you hear that on television? Yeah, hey, the hey, newspapers. come on, boys. It's, all it's over Mom and Dad's place. anniversary. Don't take this case, son. This man has trashed the reputation of the court. He's put us back 20 years. Is this how you want to be remembered? I don't see how I can turn him down. He saved my life. Well, I understand that as well as anyone. But 
but you don't repay him by falling senselessly on a grenade. The way I see it, this man should find himself the best damn lawyer in the country. Somebody better than me. The guy's a real Marine, Dad. I mean, if they can do this to him, just hang him out to dry, they, they can do it to anybody. Forget that he's my friend. They can do it to anybody. And that means that your medals and your citations won't mean jack shit when they come after you. At least two of his own guys are going to testify that he didn't have to open fire, sir. But nobody reports seeing any weapons among the demonstrators. His psych eval was a disaster. Well, what about footage from the embassy? Cameras, film, videotape, home movies, shit like that. No, no, no. I, I've subpoenaed everything. The embassy got hit pretty good. Most of it was destroyed. Terry, you know Tom Chandler? He's gonna help us prepare your case. Colonel Childers, good to see you again, sir. Um, all right. First, we've subpoenaed all the Article 32 investigators' notes, the State Department notes on Yemen. Major Biggs has already had your head checked by their doctor. Well, I've got you an appointment with ours. No. What? No more multiple choice questions about self-esteem. Uh, we got the combat fitness report, so you can forget the psych eval here. That, that, that's a mistake, Colonel. Listen, when I turned 18, I joined the Marine Corps. I asked to be in the infantry. I asked to go to Vietnam. Perry? I live for the privilege of commanding troops. I think it's the greatest honor an American can have. Perry? You know how many birthdays and Christmases I missed spent rotting in jungles or in the desert just so you could play war at Rotsy? Childers! You gotta keep your shit together here, man. Your court martial board is gonna be made up of people who might have spent one day in Grenada, maybe two days in Kuwait. They're gonna be beach boys who've never been anywhere near combat. They're gonna be people like Tom Chandler sitting right here in front of you. That's who you're making your case to. We don't have anybody to back up your case. That's because all my witnesses are dead. Okay, so what happened? He lost it. He snapped. Well, that's good. You can snap him on the stand. This doesn't happen in a vacuum. Let's get a complete history of Colonel Childers. I mean, talk to every Marine he ever served with. My guess is this has happened before. We have to be careful here. This guy is the warrior's warrior. A Navy Cross, two silver stars for composure in battle. There's no wife, no kids, just the Corps. He was our best. That's why he was sent. He is not on trial for the good service he gave the country, but for what he did on the wall in Yemen, period. Major, nobody wants to say it. But it occurs to me we're trying to set an example here. So let's set it and show the world we mean business. And the first charge supports the death penalty. And I say we go for it. No more death. I'll see that he never gets another command, and I'll put him in jail. But I will not seek death for a man who served this country honorably. I don't want it brought up again. We got to show Childers' state of mind. We got to prove he went out with intent to kill, and that is not going to be easy. Whether a man is charged with murder, or hailed as a hero is sometimes a very thin line. So, our case is this. Childers receives orders that a regularly scheduled lawful protest outside our embassy in Yemen is unruly. He is to secure or evacuate the premises. There has been no violence prior to his arrival. Once there, Ambassador Moraine does not feel the situation warrants evacuation. Childers ignores him. There was sniper fire. They draw fire from snipers across the street. Childers retaliates into an unarmed crowd in front of the embassy. A crowd of women and children. He shot the wrong people. All right, here's what this means. Murder, obviously, can get up to the death penalty. Conduct on becoming an officer. Max is dismissal with a dishonorable discharge, forfeiture with all pay and allowances, and confinement for one year. Well, what about breach of peace? What is that? Breaching the peace is minor. That means participating in an act of uh, violent or turbulent nature that deprives the community of the peace and tranquility it deserves. It's sort of like the military equivalent of the civilian misdemeanor. No big deal.
You ever play blackjack, Colonel? Not really. There are no intangibles. It's all odds, sir. If you know them, you'll beat the guy next to you. If you know what cards have been played, you'll beat the house. Sometimes you just can't win, no matter what you do. I saw your man on television knocking some zit-faced kid around. You have to understand the kind of pressure Colonel Childers has been under a man with that kind of service. No, no thanks. This was a rescue mission that went bad, nothing more. You're aware, Colonel, we could ask for the death penalty. You're not serious. Oh, I'm very serious. In fact, it's been suggested. What do you think would happen if a Yemeni killed 83 Americans? You'd have a trial that would last for one day and they'd take off his head. Have a seat, crew. Please. So here it is. You plead him out, guilty. He throws himself at the mercy. We'll help him out at sentencing. How much help? Well, I'm not about to promise you anything, but I'd say in the neighborhood of 10 to 15, out in seven. Major, do you know what the life expectancy was for a second lieutenant dropped into a combat zone in Vietnam in 1968? I don't have time for 20 questions, sir. Then what's all this shit about the odds of winning at Blackjack? You got time. Take a guess. My guess is your man's going down, because he deserves to go down. I got a question for you, Colonel. What happened at Kowloon? The Battle of Kowloon, Vietnam. You were there with Childers, something happened. What the hell was it? Fuck the year. This is what happened at Kowloon, Big. Two weeks. Life expectancy of a second lieutenant in combat in Vietnam was two weeks. Sir, I need more time to prepare this case. I need your permission to go to Yemen. It's all here, Hodge. We did an exhaustive Article 32 investigation. This thing happened in Yemen, sir. It's 3,000 miles away. I need more time. Colonel, it's all here. We had it brought here from Yemen, and it's not unusual to convene a court-martial on this short notice. There could be witnesses or something the investigators overlook, sir. Don't you think Colonel Childers is entitled? Colonel Hodges. All consideration, sir? I don't care if you go to China. We have our marching orders, and this court-martial will convene at 0900 a week Monday now. Is that clear? Yes, sir. It's okay. It's okay. I wouldn't. I oh, know. I know. It's okay. It's okay. I know. Believe me, I know. <sighs> Can I leave you alone with that thing in the house? Yeah. I ain't gonna six on you, Hodge. I'm going to Yemen. If I have to stick your ass in the hospital till I get back, that is what I will do. No, you don't have to do that. Got your word on that? take my uniform away, they may as well shoot me. You can live with it, bud. Believe me. I'm not going to shift you. They offered us a deal. You plead guilty, it's 10 to 15, you're out in seven. What do you think? I think they're out to crucify you. For a whole lot of reasons. I say we take it and call it a day. I did what they asked me to do, Hodge. I lost Marines over there. If I'm guilty of this, if I'm guilty of everything I've done in combat for the last 30 years.
Colonel Hodges, Captain Hustings. I'm not in uniform and I'm not saluting because of the snipers, but please know that I'm saluting on the inside. I've got some Kevlar back there with your name on it. We're not the most popular team in town right now, sir. Hustings, are you a wise ass? My mother prefers to think of me as glib, sir. Very well, then. I'm the most glibly delay on bullshit and drive on. Roger that, sir. I've lined up some people who were at the scene as you requested, sir. We can start tomorrow. Yeah. Here we are. Oh, 0700. Roger that, sir. The old embassy was a 5th century palace. It got pretty shot up. We're moving the new one to a bunker outside the city behind about a mile of barbed wire, sir. You want me to come with you, sir? Negative. Stay with the vehicle. Meet me at the hotel. Yes, sir.
القوات الامريكيه البحريه اطلقت النار على الناس بينما كان هؤلاء فقط يدافعون على انفسهم armed american marines they were shooting at his people they were just trying to defend themselves he's saying the marines shot first تقول ان المارينز هم البادئين باطلاق النار Why were your police officers ordered to abandon the embassy on the day of the riot? لماذا أمرتم سفارتكم بمغادرة السفارة ذلك اليوم؟ لأن احتجاجهم كان سلميا، لذا لم يكن ملزما علينا أن نقضي الليلة هناك. It was a peaceful demonstration. There was no reason to stay. After the killing, were there no weapons found in the crowd? بعد القتل، هل وجدتم سلاح بحوزة المتظاهرين؟ أبدا. أخذنا كل شيء بقي هناك، ولم نجد أي سلاح. No. They picked up everything that was left. No weapons. Hi, what's your name? You speak English? You're a very pretty girl. Katil! Is that your name? Katil? May I help you? Yeah. I was wondering what happened to her. She lost her leg. Who are you? I'm a lawyer with the United States Marine Corps. What happened? A marine lawyer? Yeah. Follow me, please. There are hospitals like this all over the city. Most of the people here will die.
Do you want something to drink? What's wrong with you? Get yourself a new lawyer, you son of a bitch. You lied to me. I could not find one goddamn witness. I couldn't find one goddamn shred of evidence. Not for our side, anyway. You clearly opened up on those people. Why were they? Ragheads, camel jockeys, or fucking gooks? You through? Yeah. Get up. Come on, get up. Come on. You. you went all the way to Yemen. All you proved is you're still a drunk. You know what your problem is? You never measured up to your old man, but I can't help you with that. This shit before somebody gets hurt. Everyone of my men at Kalu. I'll tell you the first thing I felt. Joy. Elation. I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad it wasn't me, and I goddamn fucking hate myself for feeling that. I wasn't your fault. When did you get It's 40 40, Hodge. I need a Hail Mary. Send him in. I 
I just want to make sure we're on the same page here, off the record. Of course, Bill. Now, you didn't see any weapons in that crowd, did you? Well, there was some shooting, but I, I couldn't be sure exactly where it was coming from. Let's see. That's going to be a problem, because we can't get on the stand and waffle about the charges. Waffle, Bill? Well, in your mind, Childers was responsible for this incident, wasn't he? Well, I wasn't exactly there. I'd already evacuated. You have to remember, he saved my life and my family. This all happened after. Does that mean the United States is going to have to take the fall for what he did? I don't understand. The investigating team didn't find any weapons in the crowd. Well, that's because they weren't there until the following day. The Yemeni government cleaned up the scene, but unfortunately, that's not something we can prove. Nor can I testify about it. It all happened afterward. Yeah, but you can testify about Chiller's frame of mind, his behavior while you were there. He saved my life. Surely this will all come down to what the tape shows. The tape's inconclusive. Hodges subpoenaed it, of course, but uh, it was a faulty recording. I see. Do you? If Childers isn't held totally responsible, then the United States will be. And just guess where the finger is eventually going to point. Me? Where else? You should have known this was going to erupt. And if you didn't, you were asleep at the wheel. Either way, your conduct was inexcusable. Now, do you want to face a congressional inquiry over this? Put your career at risk? Think about it. Thank you, Bill. All rise. Be seated. Look closely at this picture. Why did a well-trained fighting unit have to slaughter unarmed men, women, and children when their orders were simply to protect and, if necessary, evacuate the embassy? The answer is they didn't. They were ordered to open fire, and that order came from one man, Colonel Terry Childers, who stands trial here today, a day of sadness, a day when America has to accept responsibility for its failures and its mistakes, as well as its glories. We will show you that the accused, through his mindset and his actions, ignored the rules of engagement, and went far beyond the scope of his authority to intentionally order the murder of 83 innocent people. <clears throat> I was the last one to enter the courtroom this morning. I, I was late. I was late because I was in the head. And I was in the head because I was throwing up. I was throwing up because I don't know if I'm able to handle this job. <laughs> I believe that Colonel Childers is innocent of these charges. I just don't know if I have what it takes to make his case for him. I'm simply not on the same page as Major Briggs. Uh, 
Major Biggs here as a lawyer. We all know that. So why did I take this job? I took this case because Terry Childers told me I would have done precisely the same thing he did if I had been in his shoes. I took the case because I know Terry Childers. His word is his bond. He told me he did what he had to do. Now I hope I don't let him down. We sent Terry Childers out on a very tough mission. When it went bad, and he did everything he could to save the lives of his Marines, save the lives of the embassy people. We turn around now and want to blame the whole mess on him. Send him to prison, possibly, for the rest of his life. That's not fair. It's not right. It is what made me sick this morning. It was a large crowd. There was a lot of commotion. The noise was very unsettling. But it was a peaceful crowd. That is, until Colonel Childers arrived and prevented me from pursuing further avenues of diplomacy. Did Colonel Childers force you to leave the embassy? Yes. He charged in. He started pushing us around. He physically restrained me from doing my job. What was his state of mind at this time? He was in a fury. He was disrespectful to me and my family. Oh, that's it was bullshit. almost, how should I say, a murderous rage. Do you remember what he said? I remember he said something like, diplomacy is bullshit at this point, and that nobody fucks with the American flag. Those were his words. Thank you, Ambassador. No further questions. Do you believe that an American embassy on foreign soil is sovereign United States territory? As a general principle, yes. Do you believe Americans have a right to defend that territory if it's attacked? If it is, in fact, attacked. Would you have expected Colonel Childers to surrender to the attacking crowd or to fight them? I would have expected neither. The Colonel should have let me address the crowd, then he could have withdrawn his Marines. Would you have expected him to hold his fire as he withdrew, even if he were taking casualties? To the extent possible. So your order would have been, hold your fire to the extent possible, Marines, and to the extent not possible, fire away. Ambassador. This photograph is Exhibit C. What is that? It's a security camera. Is it mounted on the roof of the embassy, or is it pointed directly down to where the crowd had gathered? I would suppose so. Yes or no, please? Yes. Is it in operation 24 hours a day? I suppose so. Yes or no? Yes. Do you suppose there is a taping system attached to this camera? Your Honor. Colonel. Yes. Where's the tape? It's my understanding that if there were tapes, undamaged tapes, that had been sent to the State Department. Undamaged tapes? Well, there was destruction and looting after the killing. As you withdrew from the embassy, did you remember to take the American flag with you? Did you remember to take the American flag, sir? Of course. Where is that flag now? I brought it home and returned it to the State Department. It was shot to shreds, wasn't it? By the snipers, yes. Son, let me see now. Which one of you people is named Justin? Let me take a guess here. How about you? No. All right. Well, then I'll have to make another guess. Let me see. I'll take uh, you. How would you know? Are you in the Marine? Yes, sir. I am. Go in in the house, kids. There's sandwiches in the kitchen. Mrs. Moraine, I'm sorry to bother you at home. I'm Colonel. I know Hazen. who you are, Colonel Hodges. Is that your boy? Yes. Can I talk to you in a few minutes? I don't think that's appropriate. Mrs. Moraine, I don't believe your husband is telling the truth about what Colonel Childers did in Yemen. Kids, go on in the house. There are sandwiches on the table. Let's go! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> you should take that up with my husband, shouldn't you? 
Colonel Childers risked his life so you could be here, ma'am, watching these kids play out these windows. Does that bother you? I feel terrible about what happened to Colonel Childers. Can you tell me that he manhandled your family? Or that he prevented your husband from doing his job? Ma'am? Can you tell me that? No. As far as I'm concerned, he behaved quite honorably. Will you testify to that? My husband's a good man. So is Colonel Childers. I've been married for 10 years. You're asking me to throw that away in an afternoon. Your husband and you and your son owe your lives to Colonel Terry Childers. We all have our priorities, Colonel. I can subpoena you, ma'am. Please don't. Don't put me up there. I'm a very credible witness. Now, if you'll excuse me. You won't tell the truth if I put you on the stand. I don't know what the truth is. Colonel Childers is on trial for what he did outside the embassy. I wasn't there. Were you? Captain Lee, you were in command of the trap team and the second ranking officer under Colonel Childers on the Yemeni mission. Yes, sir. And you were on the roof of the embassy, were you not? Yes, I was. Colonel Childers ordered you to open fire immediately after Sergeant Richard Krasovich was shot. Is that correct? Yes. But Sergeant Krasovich was not shot by the demonstrators, was he? Uh, objection. How can we know the exact firing position of the bullet to kill Sergeant Krasovich? Sustained. The counsel refrained from leading the witness. Did you, at any time, receive gunfire from within the demonstration itself? Captain. I can't remember any fire from the demonstrators. To my knowledge, that is, sir. You killed the wrong people, didn't you? You should have been firing at the snipers across the way. Isn't that correct? I can't answer where Objection I... Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. You shot at people who were demonstrating peacefully, who were not using deadly force. Your Honor, that's not in evidence here. Sustained, Major. I'm not going to warn you again. Captain, what were the words Colonel Childers used when he ordered you to fire on the demonstrators? I don't remember the exact words, sir. He ordered me to open fire. When you obeyed Colonel Childers' order to open fire, did you believe it to be a lawful order? Yes, sir. Otherwise, it would have been your duty to disobey. Is that right? Yes, sir. When your men opened fire on the attackers in the crowd, did the snipers in the buildings across the way cease their firing? Absolutely, sir. It went completely quiet. Well, it would seem then that the two groups were actually one, working together, wouldn't it? Objection. Counsel is drawing a conclusion for the witness. Sustained. Were you in a position to observe Colonel Childers when everyone was evacuated? Yes, I was. What was the last thing you saw him do? Uh, he went to the flagpole. Then what did he do? He took down the American flag. Was he personally under heavy fire at that time? Yes, sir. No more questions. Captain, prior to receiving orders from the accused to open fire, where was the point of greatest concern for the safety of your men? The crowd below or the snipers in the buildings across the way? I'm not really sure. You're not sure? Well, I, I guess... It... Don't guess. I'll repeat the question for you. Was the point of greatest concern the crowd below or the snipers across the way? I would have to say the snipers. Did you feel an immediate mortal danger from the crowd as a whole? I don't understand. You don't understand? No, sir. Let me help you. Were you more worried you'd be killed by these people or by these people? I don't know, sir. I wasn't thinking about that. Have you ever been under fire, You didn't sir? see the crowd firing, but you did take fire from the snipers. Is that correct? Yes. Our clinic is not too far from the embassy, so I was one of the first to arrive there. Did you see any weapons on the bodies of the dead? No. Did you remove any weapons from the people you were treating? No. Not a single weapon anywhere among the victims? No, no, no weapons. In your opinion, is Yemen a training ground for terrorists? Not at all. We met in Yemen. You encouraged me to tour your clinic in order to witness the suffering caused by Colonel Childers' orders. Do you remember that? Yes. 
I found an audio cassette on the floor of your clinic. It's marked Exhibit R. Do you remember that? Yes. I found another one inside the embassy. In fact, I found several others. They're all marked Exhibit R. Will you translate the writing on the outside of that cassette, please? Declaration of Islamic Jihad against the United States. These audio cassettes are used for the purposes of religious and political propaganda due to the high illiteracy rate in Yemen. Is that correct? Yes. Will you translate the words you hear on this audio cassette for the court, please? Dr. Ramo. We call on every Muslim who believes in God and hopes for reward to obey God's command. Dr. Omar, does it say what God's command is? To kill Americans and plunder their possessions, whatever he finds them. Go on, please. To kill Americans and their allies, both civil and military, is duty of every Muslim who is able. To kill Americans is a duty. Is that what it says? Yes. Do you recognize the speaker's voice? No. Dr. Arma, in your opinion, is this propaganda representative of that demonstration? No. I'm not a member of Islamic Jihad. The crowd was singing songs. I heard them from my clinic. What was your reaction when you learned that Colonel Childers had been selected to lead this mission? I was very pleased. The Colonel had a distinguished record. He's a nationally renowned How did you warrior. define his mission? Well, we wanted to increase security, but frankly, if things got at all threatening, we wanted an evacuation. So you weren't looking for confrontation? No, that's, that's what we wish to avoid at all costs. What was your reaction to what happened? I was stunned. Appalled. Wasn't the severity of the problem at the embassy understated? Absolutely not. We operated on the information we had at the time. I have here a State Department report from Yemen. It's Exhibit M. Will you read the underlying sections for the court, please? Certainly. January 25th, grenade thrown at police car. January 27th, 16 Western tourists abducted by fundamentalist group. Go on, please. February 6th, a bomb explodes in a car parked near a school. February 20th, stun grenade thrown at newspaper kiosk near a police station. March 13th, a military officer is seriously wounded by Yemen's first donkey bomb. Explosives were apparently concealed under the saddle. Thank you. I have another State Department document dated 17 November. It's from the ambassador to you. Will you read this for the court, please? Dear Bill, please, we must revisit our previous conversation in that the security measures we have taken are still inadequate for the protection of our mission to Yemen. You have to understand that when Thank I received this letter... Now, there are, well, are there cameras mounted on the roof of the embassy? Uh, yes. Are they designed to observe and record activities in the public spaces outside the embassy? Yes. Where are the tapes? Yeah, it's my understanding the embassy was looted. Maybe the cameras were destroyed. This is a photograph. It is Exhibit D for the court. It's a picture of a camera on the embassy roof. Does it appear to be damaged? No. Where are the tapes? I don't know. Don't you think the United States owes it to Colonel Childers for 30 years of service 
to find that tape and produce it here. Objection. We don't know anything about any tapes. This is pure speculation. Sustained. This is a shipping manifest. It's Exhibit O. There's a list of items that were removed from the embassy during the evacuation and shipped to the State Department. Will you read line six, please? Videotape from security camera VHS-1. Are you too busy to look at those tapes you just didn't get? Objection, Your Honor. He's badgering the National Security Advisor. Sustained counsel, please proceed carefully. Where are those tapes? Objection. Asked and answered. Oh, yes, right. All right. Uh, don't you think it's funny that a tape that could exonerate my client is missing? I don't think it's funny at all, Mr. Colonel. Sokol, withholding evidence is a very serious crime. Objection. Sustained. Counsel, rephrase. Withholding evidence to frame a United States Marine is no less evil than charging my client with murder. Where are those tapes? But Colonel, I turned over all materials in my possession to Major Biggs. If those tapes showed a nice, happy crowd of peaceful demonstrators, we'd be looking at them right now, Objection, wouldn't we? Your Honor. This is contempt. Colonel, this is your last warning. There was a new security system. The cameras were pointed down at the crowd. Tapes were recorded, and those tapes were sent to the State Department. Why are those tapes not here? Objection, Your Honor. I've seen no such tapes. No further questions. There are no tapes showing the crowd firing weapons. None that I'm aware of. And the government has turned over all of its evidence. Of course. Colonel Hodges has gone to some length to have you read security reports illustrating violence in Yemen, has he not? Yes, he has. Here is today's Washington Post. Will you read these headlines that I've underlined from today's Metro section? Agent kidnapper killed in rescue of businessman's son. Bomb threat evacuates Museum of Natural History. Officer chases truck driver, fires 38 times. Husband shoots wife, himself in street. Mr. Sokol, does this random, unfortunate news mean we should allow Colonel Childers and his troops loose in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> Don't answer that. Thank you, Mr. Sokol. proud of my Marines. They showed remarkable discipline. Why didn't you fire at the snipers in the buildings instead of at the crowd below? Because I believe we were in greater danger from the crowd. Was that crowd firing at you? Yes. The demonstrators in front of the building were firing at you in addition to the snipers? Yes. Why didn't anybody else see that crowd firing? Well, my men were undercover on the roof, except for Sergeant Krasovich, who was on an observation post. And why isn't he here testifying on your behalf today? because he was killed in action. He died in my arms. So you were the only man left in a position to observe that crowd? Yes. Where else have you been in combat, Colonel? Vietnam, Beirut, Panama, Persian Gulf. 
Can you identify that blue and white ribbon on your uniform? It's the Navy Cross. Do you remember the citation that accompanied that medal? For conspicuous gallantry in the face of great personal danger, reflecting great credit upon himself, the United States Marine Corps and the Naval Service. Your witness. Colonel, you gunned down more than 80 people. You wounded another 100 or so. Could this have been motivated by a desire for retaliation? I was protecting my men. Sergeant Richard Krasovich was shot only a few feet away from you, is that correct? Yes. And right after Sergeant Krasovich died, you ordered open fire on the crowd, is that also correct? I was taking fire. There were weapons in that crowd. Well, you wouldn't shoot unarmed people, would you? No, I would not. Even in the heat of battle, you wouldn't shoot an unarmed person? No. This is Exhibit F. Can you please read the following to the panel? Rules of engagement governing ground conflict in urban areas. One, if possible, the enemy will be warned first, then asked to surrender. Colonel, did you warn the enemy? We arrived in helicopters. We were standing that roof armed. Did you warn them, either with shots into the air or by a loudspeaker? Did you ask them to surrender? No. I'm sorry. No, you did not warn the crowd? Yes. No, I did not warn the crowd. Oh, continue, Colonel. You seem to know them by heart. Deadly force is the last resort. Go on. Three. When possible, try to arrange for the evacuation of civilians prior to any U.S. attack. Did you do that, Colonel? Try to evacuate the innocent people before you slaughtered them? Objection? That is inflammatory. Rephrase, Major. Did you try, following Section C of the Rules of Engagement for Ground Conflict in Urban Areas, to evacuate innocent civilians? No. No. I just have one more thing, Colonel. Did you have to repeat your orders to Captain Lee? Sorry? You ordered Captain Lee to engage hostile targets, and he advised you that there were women and children in the line of fire. Is that correct? Well, he couldn't see. Yes or no, Colonel? Did he follow your first set of orders? I don't remember. Captain Lee is on record as saying he hesitated and mentioned the snipers in the buildings. Is his testimony accurate? I don't remember. Let me get this straight. You evacuate the ambassador. You go back to the roof. Two of your Marines are KIA. A third, Sergeant Krasovich, dies. You give your captain an order, which he doesn't follow. In fact, he questions. And then you said, what? I don't remember. You don't remember what you said next? It was combat, not some training A exercise. moment later, your men were shooting. What did you say to make that happen? I don't know. You must have said something. Captain Lee reversed himself. What did you say? I don't know the exact words. Let me help you. Your Honor. You said waste the motherfuckers, didn't you? No, no, no. You didn't say it? Well, it all happened so fast. You're I... under oath, Colonel. Let me refresh your memory. This is Exhibit Q, a tape recording made aboard the USS Wake Island of all radio communications received that day, including your exact words. Your Honor, with your permission, I would like to play this tape. Well, if you got it on tape, then that's what I said. They were killing my Marines, so yeah, I said it. Waste the motherfuckers. Are these the motherfuckers? Objection. Overruled. Yes. These? Objection. Yes. These? Objection. Overruled. Yes. Are these the motherfuckers that you ordered to be wasted? Your Honor. Major. Yes! Your, your Honor. The crowd in front of the embassy had no weapons, did they, Colonel? Objection. We found no snipers' weapons either. Yes, they had weapons. You think there's a script for fighting a war without pissing somebody off? Follow the rules and nobody gets hurt? Yes, innocent people probably died. Innocent people always die. But I did not exceed my order. There are rules and Marines are sworn to uphold them. I was not going to stand by and see another Marine die just to live by those fucking rules. Colonel. Your Honor, I request a recess. Major. 
government is finished with Colonel Childers, Your Honor. All right, Colonel. You have your recess. Why didn't you tell me what you said? I didn't remember. If I remembered, I would have told you. Waste the motherfuckers. That's brilliant. You didn't think that was important. Well, why didn't you know about the goddamn recording? You're supposed to know everything. You I had know. one week to prepare this case. I just didn't realize what a fuck up I'm defending. Yeah, well, now you know. Damn. This is gonna take us both down, you know? Yeah? How's that work, Hayes? You gonna spend the rest of your life in prison, too? I'm sorry. I really screwed up in there, huh? Yeah, you really did. <laughs> what happens now? Shit, I don't know. I don't know. Your Honor, the government calls Colonel Bin Lee Cow as a rebuttal witness. Objection, Your Honor. What are the grounds for this rebuttal witness to be allowed? Will counsel please approach the bench? <sighs> who is Colonel Bin Lee Cow? He was a North Vietnamese colonel who fought against Colonel Childers at the Battle of Kalu. But he has to say directly refute statements made by Colonel Childers. When was the Battle of Kalu? 1968. Your Honor, this is uncharged misconduct that is not allowable under military law. Well, how do you know this witness is going to charge misconduct? Well, I'm he knows because he was at the Battle of Kalu. Is that true? Yes, sir. On what grounds are you calling your witness? Colonel Hodges made Colonel Childers' combat experience part of his defense. Furthermore, Colonel Childers testified that he never shoots unarmed people. My witness has an important perspective on that statement. I'm going to allow the witness. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you shall give in this case now and hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. You please state your name for the court. My name is Bin Le Cao. In 1968, you were a colonel with the North Vietnamese Army, B-3 Regiment, involved in a fight with American Marines at Ka Lu in the Quang Tri province. Yes, I was. Will you tell the court about that battle? We were aware that the small units of Americans were near my company of men. We found ourselves behind your forces. This was lucky for us because we were outnumbered. Do you recognize this man? Yes. Did he capture you and your radio operator that day? Yes. Did he remove your weapons and place you under armed guard? Yes. Did you consider yourself a prisoner of war? Yes. Did he execute your radio operator? Yes. You personally saw him shoot a fellow prisoner of war? Yes. Where did he shoot him? In the head. Thank you. No further questions. Were your men annihilating that platoon of Marines? Yes. Did Colonel Childers force you to call your men off? Yes. Do you believe his actions were calculated to save the lives of American Marines? Yes. Would you have done the same thing Colonel Childers did if the situation had been reversed? Colonel Cow, would you have shot a captive American radio operator in the head if you thought it would persuade Colonel Childers to spare the lives of your own men? Yes. No more questions? This court is in recess until tomorrow at 0900, when we will hear closing arguments.
Colonel Terry Childers is a decorated war hero, a trusted leader of American Marines, and I wish that was all there was to it. Unfortunately, there are 83 dead Yemeni citizens, many of them women and children. Colonel Hodges would have you believe that this crowd was armed. He would also have you believe that there is a videotape proving this to be true. There is no tape exonerating Colonel Childers. There is no evidence exonerating Colonel Childers. Is Colonel Childers a man capable of killing defenseless, unarmed people? Is he capable of ordering the execution of innocent men and women? Is he capable of executing POWs with his own hand? Unfortunately, we've shown that he is. You've heard the sad testimony of Colonel Cow, who witnessed Colonel Childers' barbarism firsthand. You've even heard Colonel Childers' own admission that his desire was to waste them, regardless of who they were. Now, we are faced with the difficult prospect of convicting one of our own. None of us wants to do this, but you've heard the facts, and it is unavoidable. Colonel Terry Childers ordered the senseless slaughter of a peaceful crowd. Now, as Marines, we do not get the luxury of covering up our mistakes. We must air them, thereby ensuring that they never happen again. Thank you. That sovereign United States territory as much as if it were in Ohio or Maryland. Colonel Childers didn't volunteer to go over there. He was ordered to go over there because he was the best man for the job. We armed him, we trained him, we sent him over there to risk his life to save other Americans and then ask him not to return fire. There are over 300 bullet holes in this building. Colonel Childers didn't open fire, he returned fire. And he waited until after three of his Marines were dead. And another lay mortally wounded. He waited until he was personally under heavy fire. He waited until he saw that crowd holding weapons. Only then did he order his men to return fire. Under the rules of engagement, a civilian pointing a weapon is no longer a civilian, and the use of deadly force is authorized in order to save lives. It's not murder. It's combat. Colonel Childers is the only man alive who was in a position to see that crowd. But the camera on the embassy roof had the same point of view. The government would have you believe there's no tape from that camera. I have shown you that that tape was delivered to the State Department. Do you believe that tape got up and walked out of the State Department on its own? By not producing that tape, the National Security Advisor, Mr. Sokol, has brought dishonor into this court. Without that tape, I cannot show you that the crowd fired first and that Colonel Childers is innocent, but without that tape, they cannot prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he's guilty. Here's my case. He's all I've got. 32 years of service. 32 years of heroism as a United States Marine. Regardless of what you decide here, Colonel Childers' career as a Marine is over. He will never again command men in combat. <laughs> The ambassador and his family are alive today because of him, and I know how the ambassador feels because Colonel Childers saved my life, too. I'm alive today only because of him. My son is sitting in this courtroom because of him. I'm alive today, and I have a son because of the heroism of Colonel Childers. To ask this man to risk his life for his country, to ask this man to watch his Marines die in his arms and call it murder when he's defending himself, call it murder for firing back when fired upon, to call it murder for saving the lives of his countrymen under the most extreme of circumstances, that's uh, my fellow Marines. That's hanging him out to dry. It's worse than leaving him wounded on a battlefield. That is something you do not do if you are a United States Marine. And it is something that I pray to God you won't do here either.
you think? I feel pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And you were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I'm very glad that I don't have to sit on that panel right now, son. You made it awful tough on them. Fifteen to twenty-five thousand. Excuse me. I said no interruptions. I'm sorry, Mr. Sokol. It's very important. Send him in. Can we, uh, can we pick this up after lunch, gentlemen? Absolutely. <laughs> Close the door. What is it, Colonel? No matter what happens to Terry Childers tomorrow, I'm not going to leave this job until I find out what happened to that tape. Good. Think it'll ever turn up? No. I don't either. <laughs> well, then there's nothing more for us to talk about, is there? You ever had a pissed-off Marine on your ass? Is that a threat? Oh, yes, sir. All rise. Has the panel reached a verdict? We have, sir. Colonel Terry L. Childers, this court martial finds as follows. On the charge of breach of peace, the court finds the defendant guilty. On the charge of conduct unbecoming an officer, the court finds the defendant not guilty. On the charge of murder, the court finds the defendant not guilty. This court-martial is adjourned. Sentencing will be conducted at a time to be determined. Thank you. I need one more favor. Yeah. Teach me how to fly fish. You are well aware that I know shit about fly fishing. <laughs> Colonel. You realize in light of Colonel Cow's testimony, we'll be pushing for charges on the Carlo incident. That was 30 years ago. You're going to have a hard time finding witnesses. Well, I thought maybe you'd be willing to testify. I'll make you a deal. If you can tell me right now what the life expectancy was for a second lieutenant dropped into a hot LZ in Vietnam in 1968, I'll tell you everything I remember about Kalu. One week. Negative. 16 minutes. 16 fucking minutes. And that's all I remember. <laughs> 